Jam. Today's tune is focused around an iconic American sports car, the 1963 Chevrolet Corvette C2. This car is such an incredible classic that it's often sought out by collectors. Within GT7, this car is part of the legendary dealership. So while it might not currently be available when you watch this video, it cycles in and out of stock. It's worth the price as it's fairly cheap overall, only costing $237,000. So whether you're collecting all cars in the game or just adding new or interesting rides, it's a fantastic option for something to give you a somewhat unique driving experience. While it may not be the easiest credit grinding car, this too makes it viable and it gives you some classic American muscle in a very unique and elegant package. This tune is benchmarked around the 700 performance points level. This will give you another 700 performance points tune which you can use at Le Mans or any other tracks if you adjust the gearing. I kept the overall look and feel of this car aligned to the classic looks. As such, I chose to keep the bumpers on and I didn't add a rear wing. This tune is more form over function, so it'll work for you, but to be clear this tune could be further optimized if you added some parts that potentially take away from the looks. So this is more of a gentleman's build, still aggressive enough to give that classic muscle feel but without compromising the DNA of the original Corvettes. I've done some slight cosmetic mods to it with the revised front arrow and slightly oversized wheels, but overall I kept it as stock as much as possible. So in terms of performance, this car is really solid. I love how it handles on the track and with considerable suspension work, it can actually hold its own. This car tends to be tail heavy under acceleration, which is to be expected, but it's got a great engine note from the V8 and it sounds incredible as you move up and down through the gears. Like multiple tunes, you'll have the easiest time on this track if you get poor weather, so be mindful of your tire selection, and given you're running a heavy V8 powered rear wheel drive car, be conservative to maintain optional traction on your laps. In terms of history, the C2 Corvette is really the first true sports focused Corvette. Previous cars were open roadsters or cruisers. In the second generation, the car was redesigned as a sports car and received an upgraded power plant with the introduction of a 5.4 liter V8. This car was heavily influenced by the Stingray Racing concept car and its style was dramatically changed from the previous Roadster. The body and the chassis were completely redesigned with a shorter wheelbase, four-wheel independent suspension, which helped improve its handling and composure. It also made use of fiberglass, which was relatively rare back in its day, giving it incredible acceleration. It's a great car and highly sought by collectors as a true nod to the American automotive design and performance. And I'm biased. I love this version of the Corvette. I'm thrilled to have a tune for it that I can use on the daily if needed. All right, so let's get into the tune. So stat changes from stock, we increased the performance to just around 700, horsepower is now 515, and this car has 446 pounds of torque. It's relatively lightweight for a muscle car, so weight comes in just around 2400 pounds, and it focused on improving acceleration, top speed, and cornering. And this car has a bunch of permanent upgrades, so these include a wide body kit from GT Auto, bore up, stroke up, engine balance, polished ports, high lift cams, racing crankshaft, We've done weight reduction stage three, and I've increased the body rigidity. The performance upgrades include a front spoiler from GT Auto, racing hard tires, a fully customized suspension, a fully customized LSD, a full control computer, a power restrictor and a ballast, and a fully customized racing transmission. We've also added racing components like an air filter, muffler, exhaust manifold, racing brakes and pads, a brake balance controller, and a racing clutch on flywheel. For this build, this car runs on racing hard tires. You'll need a set of rain tires as well if you are planning to use this on Le Mans. So for adjustments, I've done a lot of work to the suspension. I've lowered the car slightly, I've tightened the roll bars and springs, and I've adjusted the natural frequency. Handling on the original car isn't great, so we made some adjustments to the toe angle on the camber. The LSD is adjusted to ensure power is applied without losing traction to the rear end, and I've increased the front downforce. The transmission does have some manual tuning as well, so pause the video if you want to get the exact gear ratios. This current build is tuned to max out on the Le Mans straight and it counts at the bulk of your laps of fuel mapping for. And that's pretty important. So typically muscle cars, when you're running them on Le Mans, you typically have to run the fuel mapping around five or six. The great news about this car is that it really gives you a lot of flexibility because of its lightweight and its overall economy. So even though it's a muscle car, you're running at fuel mapping four, which makes it just a much easier race overall. So feel free to adjust it if you want to run the track slightly differently or you want to use it on another course. So overall the car came out great, it still drives like a muscle car, but its handling is better due to its tuned suspension and the lighter overall body weight. You will need to feather the throttle on corners, or when the car is not planted, the back end will absolutely kick out on you if you don't respect this car on the corners. The tune is pretty dramatic change over stock, but it does allow this car to push into the 700 performance level fairly easy. 
It's also important that this car is holding back on the engine output. So if you want to run it on a slightly higher races, you can tune it up very easily by adjusting the ECU or the power restrictor. So for the race strategy, plan to run it at fuel mapping four and also short shift to ensure you have enough fuel for three full laps. The light weight of the Corvette helps provide it with better fuel economy than the average muscle car. I'd recommend you keep both wet and intermediate tires on the car just so you have some options on the race and can adjust accordingly to weather. You'll need to plan two pit stops for this race and on the final lap or two you can go full tilt on fuel mapping one and easily gain any lost time. As I mentioned, good weather is actually a bigger challenge for you with tunes like this. Ideally, you're running this thing in rain after two or three laps, and with the proper tires, you'll easily gain 40 to 50 seconds on the closest car. As I mentioned, the C2 is available from the legendary dealership for a limited time. If you want this car but are waiting, just flag it now so you're notified when it returns. For only $237,000, it's worth it. It's very unique. It's a very cool car. It's not going to be the fastest around Le Mans. But it's decent, like the lap times were in the 4.15 to 4.17 range and that's at field mapping 4, so it's solid. It's a fun ride and it'll give you some variety in your garage. The engine note, relatively responsive cornering, and overall looks make this just a great purchase. In terms of livery, this is custom and public should you want it. Again, I tried keeping this thing relatively stock, but I changed the color back to a classic metallic red. I cleaned up the plates to get rid of the white background, and I added stingray badging to the plate to note the car's inspiration. I hope you enjoy this tune and this car not only earns you some credits, but it gives you some variety to enjoy. If you like these tunes, please like and comment below. It greatly helps with my channel growth on YouTube and it helps steer me in the right direction for content. If you're looking to connect with others around gaming in general, feel free to join our Discord. If you're looking for more info on GT7, tunes, or just gaming in general, it's a great community. As always, thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next one.